Hi, today's the start of season two of Monkey Business. Thank you. Appreciate folks subscribing to see our little business show. Great to see you. A doctor just saw me? Well, no, it's to celebrate the opening of season two of Monkey Business. Ah, uh, merci. And you know, I was actually on time for the celebration. I don't know. Mostly. So, welcome to season two of Monkey Business and back to the regular broadcast. Well, the pet is over already. Maybe we have time for one more round of champagne. I don't think so. Ah, bien, at least let's enjoy all the pretty lights. Um, well, okay, but back in a minute. We're right, back in a minute. Oh, you know, what? I forgot to I'm supposed to be somewhere. Where? I'm thinking for mermaids. No time to explain. Bye-bye. Hey, you there. Hold the plane. Hmm. I don't know. I guess we'll find out later. Have a good trip, Marcel. Hello and welcome to Monkey Business. This is Monkey Business for April 3rd, 2013. And in today's afternoon coffee newser, we have... Search giant Baidu, China's dominant internet services company, confirms to news agency Reuters and tech sites Tech in Asia, Mashable, and TechCrunch that the company is quietly working on a wearable gadget similar to search giant Google's Google Glass, likely to be called Baidu Eye. More on Google Glass in the episode above... And links to more details on the project in the info box. Baidu is nicknamed the Google of China and holds a 70% plus share of the domestic internet search market in China. In Google News, meanwhile, the search giant is under fire by regulatory watchdogs in France, the UK, Germany, Spain, Italy, and the Netherlands. Google is accused of potentially violating EU citizens' privacy rights. A release from Francis Sinel um, indicates that six European data protection authorities will launch simultaneous investigations into the company's practices related to its privacy policy. Google's change to its privacy policy, implemented in 2012, allowed the search giant to track users more closely in order to develop targeted advertising. The outcome of an EU regulatory probe into company practices could mean potential fines in the hundreds of thousands of euros, but more critically, legal action by privacy regulators could restrict Google from collecting user data in EU countries, hobbling a major part of the search engine's business model with a potential impact on ad revenues. Statistics company Statista notes that the search engine company less than 15 years old generates more money in ad revenues than all U.S. print publications combined. In the first six months of 2012 alone, for example, Google took in 20.8 billion U.S. dollars in ad revenues. And in economics news, the ADP National Employment Report shows that private employers in the U.S. added 158,000 jobs in March 2013. However, economists surveyed by news agency Reuters had forecast that the report would show a gain of 200,000 jobs. The report shows the smallest employment gains since October 2012. For more on any of these stories, just browse the links in the info box. And now over to Marcel for Nearly News. Take it away, Marcel! It's beautiful weather, so for today's man, have a part with flying off the coast of Florida in the U.S. looking for some colorful fans. There are some in Wikiwatchi, Florida, in the United States. Oh, hello, Floridians down there! Which is home to an interesting tourist attraction. Mermaids. Or oh, there is? Oh, no, at least not in Wikiwatchi, but if you like to see mermaids, then there are some there. Hello down there! Uh, mermaid, shall we have a swim? Hello? Is that a fin? Oh, la la, what's this? I think we found some likely candidates, huh? Here I am. For today's story, we have a little look at a uh, story where business and fantasy collide. It happens more often than you think, actually. For example, uh, with fantasy program Game of Thrones merchandising, which we covered in the episode above. Or oh, anticipating a billion plus dollars in box office receipts for fantasy film The Hobbit, uh, that episode uh, there somewhere. You know, sometimes business and fantasy get along together very well. For all the people who dream of mermaids, the Mertella founder Eric Ducham is making their dreams come true. Ducham, shown in the clip above, was fascinated with the mermaids, and in his teen years, he started a small business to make silicone fins. Today, the Mertella shop offers a full range of fins and accessories for mermaid aficionados, and counts several new media companies on his client list, including the Walt Disney Company and MTV. So, on the business side, to create a convincing mermaid, how much does it actually cost? Well, let's see. 
Anywhere from uh, 132 uh, to 530 US dollars for a range of performance spandex or silicone partial tears to 2800 for performance level prosthetics. And for a few more clam shells, a mermaid aficionado can add a top mid of rear shells for about 40 US dollars. Or swish around in the underwater kingdom wearing a 345 US dollar netted silicone top called a dueling octopus cylinder, no doubt that's very interesting. Other folks in the mermaid business are Magic Tail in Germany, they also make mermaid tails, and the Mermaidus went mermaid performers based in Tampa, Florida in the US. So for today for a mad have a pot we've instead gone seven leagues below to an underwater kingdom. There be mermaids and mermen there. Wow! Oh. Look at them go! It's like a lot size to quit, huh? Eh, oh la la! I'll be back in the next episode for another Mad High Report, but right now I'm just trying to remember where I put my scuba gear. And that's today's monkey business. Take care, folks! There are mermaids out there! Hey, you know what for me, I huh? can't find my fins. Can fishing, huh? A tout à l'heure! Oh, yeah, yeah, it's not so easy as it looks, huh? Oh, bloop, bloop, bloop. Can you toss in here? Cult TV?